So uh, now we are starting the other experimental graph that is effect of increasing strength of stimuli on simple muscle curve. So in that you are, you are going to get graphs like this. So uh, looking at the graphs like this you would have a uh, few things in your mind that why li um, like other practicals you are not getting curve like this. Like you have seen you are getting curves like this in other practicals, why not in this practical? See suppose if we are doing, uh, you are making graph on any curved surface, okay and that curved surface is suppose moving, then only we can get graph like this. So these graphs we are making on curved surface but that is stationary. So we are doing this practical on stationary drum, suppose if we will draw uh, perpendicular on this it will be like this on any curved surface if we will try to draw perpendicular so it will be drawn like this. So in any practical if we do not need uh, different uh, time of different phases like these phases so that curve we can make on stationary surface. So these curves are made on stationary drum so that is why we are getting uh, graphs like this. Uh, there is one thing that we have shifted the drum little bit, every time we have shifted the drum little bit so, uh, so to get another graph. So that is why we have obtained graph like this. Second thing that you must be thinking what, uh, what are these numbers 20, 19, 18, 17, 16 as the number is decreasing length of the graph is increasing. So what are these numbers? These numbers actually show you the distance between two coils. So while uh, these graphs were made, actually we were using induced current which were produced in the secondary coil. So uh, and th that induced current was produced because of change in flux in the primary coil. So as we were in, in, uh, decreasing the distance between two coils, there was increased strength of stimuli in the uh, there was increased current in the secondary coil. So that is why there, there is increased strength of you know uh, stimulus gradually. So as we are decreasing the distance between two coils there is increased current in the secondary coil. So that is why these number are being written. Third thing which may come into your mind is why MB? What is this MB, MB, MB? So uh, meaning of this MB is make shock and break shock. So we know that induced current is produced only when there is any uh, there is any change in the flux in the primary circuit. So when the current was starting means make shock or the current was breaking means break shock. Only that time there was production of induced current in the secondary circuit. So that is why it is showing make shock or break shock. At a single point there may be two strength of currents one at the make one at the break. So that is why the meaning is make and break. Now what happens in that? We can see in this graph there is increase length of curves, increasing length of curves. So what is the meaning of that? See uh, we are gradually, uh, suppose this is one motor unit. This is, this is one muscle. And suppose there are three motor units in that. Although in any muscle there are multiple motor units, but here for an understanding I am drawing three motor units. One has threshold of 5, another has threshold of 10 and third one has threshold of 15. So suppose we are giving current of different strengths. So in the beginning suppose I have given a current of stimulus of 2 millivolts then will there be any response no because it is below threshold but then I gave a current of 5 millivolts so this one of motor units has threshold of 5 so this one motor unit will contract and then muscle will also contract if again we are giving a stimulus of 10 millivolts what happens what happens now this motor unit and this motor unit will come in picture because now this is crossing the threshold of these two motor units and now the contraction of the muscle will be little more stronger. Now again if I am giving a stimulus of 12 millivolts 
will there be any change in the force of contraction of muscle no because previously also two motor units were there and now also two motor units will be there to contract the muscle now again i have suppose i have given a stimulus of 15 millivolts now we'll see that all the three motor units will come in picture because now my stimulus has crossed crossed the threshold of all the three motor units and now the muscle will contract to its maximum again if i have given a, a stimulus of 20 millivolts will there be any change in the force of contraction no because all the three motor units have come in picture so gradually as we have increased uh, strength of stimulus more and more motor units kept on adding and more and more stronger will be the force of contraction of muscle so this phenomena is called as recruitment phenomena so what is recruitment phenomena as we keep on increasing strength of stimuli more and more motor units will keep on adding and more and more stronger will be the force of contraction of muscle so by this example we can understand here so this is so here we have given a stimulus here a stimulus so there was no response at this point at the 18 centimeter distance of between two coils there was some response which is called as threshold stimulus so here we can understand for this muscle it was 5 millivolts okay so at the point when at least one uh, motor unit will come in picture so that is the threshold stimulus but then we kept on increasing the force uh, uh, the strength of stimuli the force or, of contraction kept on increasing at one point it was maximum okay after that we kept on increasing the stimuli strength of stimuli but there was no change in the force of contraction of muscle why because already all the motor units have been recruited have been added so uh, the examiner may ask you the definition what is this the minimum stimulus at which the max, uh, at which at least some response was produced is called as minimal or threshold or liminal it is liminal not luminal it is liminal stimulus so what is threshold stimulus minimum stimulus at which the response was produced at least some response was, was produced is the threshold or minimal stimuli now what is maximal stimulus maximal stimulus is the minimum stimulus at which the maximum response is achieved we can see the maximum response is achieved in all four graphs but this was the minimal stimulus at which the maximum response was achieved is maximal stimulus okay okay what is sub maximal the responses uh, the responses between the threshold stimulus and maximal are the sub maximal and the responses after maximal stimuli are supra maximal stimuli okay so here these are supra maximal stimuli we kept on increasing the strength of stimuli but there was no change in the height of curves or in other words there was no change in the force of contraction of muscle okay so uh, these are few definitions here now your examiner may ask you that why here all or null law is not followed okay we have seen that on increasing strength force of contraction kept on increasing so we can answer that all or none law is true for one motor unit but here we have multiple motor units okay so here all or none law does not apply then now your examiner may ask you what is all or none law so all or none law is within same environmental conditions if a stimulus is being given to a motor unit that motor unit will contract to its maximum or not at all suppose this stimulus is more than threshold equal to or more than threshold stimulus the motor unit will contract to its maximum or if it is less than threshold it will not contract at all this is all or none law all or none law is true for muscle fibers uh, nerve fibers motor units and heart as a whole but not for muscle as a whole okay and here we are taking muscle not the not single motor unit now your examiner may ask you what is motor unit and you must know motor unit is single motor neuron and muscle fibers supplied by it constitute one motor unit 
so this is all about these graphs many time a uh, when make and break shock both are not used you may get single graph okay in many experiments uh, arrangements are done in such a way that they use only break shocks in that in that uh, in those experiments you will not get two curves at each uh, distance you will get only one curve that is made with the break shock only many time a uh, you should not get confused many time you get you will get straight lines like this okay so why we are getting curved line like this curve because we are making these graphs on the on the cylindrical surfaces so we will get curved lines but when we are getting straight lines it means it is made on plane surface when these are made on plane surface we'll get straight lines so in few cases you may get straight lines like this now very rarely uh, where the experiments are these experiments are taught in detail they may ask you why break shock is stronger than the make shock you can see that the lines of the break shock is little higher than the make shock so why that occurs then uh, some books have given explanation that in break shock the current in the primary and secondary coils are in same direction and in make shock they are in opposite direction so uh, current produced during break shock is little little more than the make shock so this is all about these graphs so i will revise the important viva questions identify the graph this is the most most important question identify the graph and what are these you know threshold stimulus what is maximal stimulus what is supra maximal what is sub maximal stimuli and then you must know what is recruitment phenomena you must know all or null law you must know motor units so all these may be asked for your viva so that was all about this curve this graph and important viva questions related to it